like everybody's been talking about God's mercy, right? Lo do do da ju da ju. Where's Taika? Lo do do da ju da ju. Lo do do da ju da ju. Lo do do da ju da ju. subject of faith, I said, Mark 11, when he said, whatsoever, whosoever shall say, you shall have what you say and does not doubt in his heart, therefore, when you pray. So, what the scripture is trying to make clear is that when you go to God in prayer and you ask him anything and he hears you and he accepts the petition and it is granted. He said, when you leave that holy place with the Lord and you step out, every confession you make must align with what you agreed with God. You can vary it in different forms, but it must align with what you said with God. Or, because I remember one time, a young guy had cancer, was 26 or 28. He said the Lord appeared to him and said, you are healed. And he died a year later. When I met with him, he said the Lord told him he was healed. I said, it doesn't mean you are healed yet. He said, I is healed. I said, but you are still bringing up blood. So you are yet to be healed. He said, once the Lord says it is settled, he's healed. God's word is settled in heaven. It's not settled on earth. And he's yet to settle it. He died some months later. And sometimes those things probe me to ask what happened. And the Lord begins to explain that I appeared to Paul and I told him he would go to Rome. And he kept quiet. And he was talking different things until he agreed with me and appealed to Caesar. He didn't go jack. And I've seen people say, that's okay. But God showed me he's going to be a pastor. How did her son die? I guess there was something she ought to have spoken into the ears of God. And there's something she ought to have done before God that was missing. Because God's word is only settled in heaven. You have to settle it on earth. Amen? Amen. So the scripture says, once you agree with God, then like they told Mary, you shall have a son. He shall be called Jesus. She can't keep quiet. And then she didn't say to people and get everybody confused. 
I'm going to have a son. They said, but you are not yet even engaged. What's the problem? Which son? She said, my soul doth magnify the Lord, my spirit rejoice in God, my Savior. For he has regarded the lowest state of his body from henceforth. All generations shall call me blessed. People say, I've always known you'll be great. That one you just said, I agree with you. But she said, I'm going to have a son. They said, you are confused. They, like they said, Paul, they said, something has turned you mad. They will call her mad. Now, like, where? How are you going to have a son? Are you married? So, she confessed to agree with God said what God said, but she didn't say exactly what God said in order to avoid unnecessary arguments, which is wisdom. Amen? Amen. We said, in the place of that confession is where Satan will show up and try to use things you have faith in to change your confession and disagree with what you agreed with God. He will try and use what you believe in. For example, in Mark 5, no, Mark 4, it was the lower uh, verses, that Jesus told his disciples, we cross to the other side. The Satan, being fishermen, used semi-tsunami. <coughs> you get it? Semi-tsunami. When they looked at it, they said, we perish. Contradicting what God and their God agreed with. And Satan said that I just walked away. I'm done here. I've messed up this so please. God's word cannot come to pass again. And he walked away. And that's how it was. And people don't understand. He has no new tricks. He has nothing new to bring up. It's the same old tricks. He's going to wait. He can't enter that closet with you with God. He would. Well, to some extent he can. Because he entered with Kenneth Hagin. And while the Lord was speaking with him, he brought a a glass and blocked the entrance between the Lord and Kenneth Hagin. And the Lord kept speaking. And Kenneth Hagin, after a while, said, I can't hear the Lord again. What's going on? And he was angry. And the monkey was jumping up and down, distracting. I said, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. I said, you know what? Satan entered God's presence with Zachariah and resisted him at his right hand. So if he feels he can resist you, he will enter. <laughs> and he knows God will not do anything. You are the only one that can do something about it. He asked the Lord, did you not see Satan block me from talking to you? He said, I saw it. He said, why didn't you do it? He said, I couldn't. He said, I delegated all authority to deal with these beings to you. He said, if you didn't do anything on it, after a while I will leave and you will not get the message again. He said, wow. So it comes with all sorts. And when it comes, you cannot lie to the ears of God. You get it? And when it comes, you must vary it in line with what you see and where you are going. An example. Jesus agreed with God, this sickness of Lazarus will not lead to death and that God will be glorified. Then Satan struck him dead. Now Jesus can say, he will not die. That's what we say. I reject it. No, reject. It's the language of the, of the infidel. It's not the language of faith. Faith has a language. And the faith does not speak in this manner. You get it? Romans 10. The righteousness of faith does not speak in this, does not say in this manner. So I reject it as the language of the infidel, which a lot of Christians do say anyway. So after Lazarus died, Jesus said, our friend Lazarus sleep, but I go to wake him up. He didn't deny what was going on, but he spoke to align back with what God agreed with him. And you must understand that to say, Lazarus is not dead. It's a lie. And that's lying into the ears of God. He wouldn't like that. Because he's dead. Though you agreed, the sickness would not lead to death. That's why the unlightened cannot walk with God. Because you need wisdom to walk with God. You get it? Yes, Pastor. Now, Usually, where people have problems is the waiting between when you leave God's presence and when you have the physical manifestation, which is when all the um, issues come up here and there. And like last week, I started talking about the benefits of when this process is started in your life, what you stand to enjoy. Because you might say to yourself, well, I had this friend. I was believing God. I had to trust God to pay my rent. He just had the money. He just wrote. He just transferred. He got everything done. I had to believe God to the last minute. 
God assured me and I eventually paid it. Ah, I wish I had money. You must understand. There are benefits he cannot enjoy, which you will enjoy. You have gone through the process of faith and there are benefits that comes with it. We said last week, God cannot be studied. God cannot be learned. God can only be revealed. And in Romans 1, 16 to 17, it says, we are not ashamed of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to the Jew first and then to the Greeks for they To 50,000. And at the last minute, after confessing, then the money shows up. Kicking you will into your loan. It's an act of God's mercy. It's a phase. When that phase passes, your assets will quadruple to over a billion. But then you would have gained some eternal benefits, which you can never have if that phase does not come. And I've noticed that pattern in the life of every human being that God raises up. Have the assets of one trillion. A time will come. You will believe God for 250,000. And you will find it. Until the last minute you will believe God like this. <laughs> you have not sold it. How much is it worth? 50 million. Reduce it to 10 million. They will buy it. <laughs> they say it's a nice property. God, this is good. We will get back to you. Eh? They won't come back. Wow, you made this is in Nigeria. Why are we wasting our time? And so, so, and so. This is what we should buy. <coughs> in fact, before this time tomorrow, the transaction will be completed. Hey, yo. They won't show up. And the bill is on Thursday. You wait, wait, they don't show up. Tuesday, they don't show up. Father, oh God. Ah, just 500. What's the meaning of this? They hold me. Then early Thursday morning, someone comes and says, um, what you're not even planning to sell? That is irrelevant. They now pay 500,000. Then you pay, say, what is all this? God said, now you can know me. Now I can give you a throne. Now I can give you crowns. Now I can give you stars. If you sold it before, you will be denied all that. You will stand with palms forever and ever into eternity. Now you can have robes instead of garments. We want this face in your life to reward you. We have seen you are a good man. We want to reward you. When you pass this face, they will transit you where you have the billions and you don't need to believe God. And it will work like that. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. He says, I'm 19. I will show you the pathway of life. That's the pathway of life. There's nobody that can reverse it. It's going to work like that. Hmm? Yeah. They say, but I have peace and there's no money. <laughs> Does that sound familiar? Yes, Does it sound very familiar? Very, very I have peace, but ah, God, kill a lady to be all law. Eh, a old me. To a wa, all law, Koshik Bosita, 100,000. Tafi Moti, ah, God. What is this? Right? Okay, dispose of this one. They say they will pay. It's Thursday, you need it. They say they'll pay when you wait, they don't pay. Friday, they're not ready to pay when you have got to do money. <laughs> it's an act of God's love. Because you can't know God except by faith. And God says, I speak to your shame for some know not God. Can you imagine when someone gets to heaven and God says, shame on you! Car, look at this shameless being. Why? He doesn't know God. He never walked by faith. He said, it's a shame not to know God. I read it to you, Deuteronomy. He said, I speak to your shame. Some do not know God. He said, but why did God say I'm a shameless human being? He said, because you don't know God. But I gave to the Lord. He said, no, you couldn't believe God. So you can only know God by faith. Amen. We looked at that last week. Also, we looked at 1 Peter 1.5. 
saw these young people dying. So long as that agreement is activated in that closet, and you walk out of that room, and you make your first pronouncement of faith, nothing can touch your life. You're immune. Say, but if it was in a plane crash, you'd be the only survivor. You can't die. First Peter 1 5. We are kept. We are protected by the power of God. How? Through faith. Then, when people are, you don't even need to pray if you're traveling. Don't you can pray. Father, oh God, just sleep. <laughs> just know you are in faith. That's all. Just sleep. Because of you, bandits will sleep off. Did you see 3,000 million men sleep? Is that normal? Up and, up and 3,000, not soldiers, special forces. 3,000 guarding the president. Sleep. Ah, uh, elite forces. <laughs> when you say elite forces, they don't sit. They move up and down. Their guns, their hands are on the trigger, but the safety cap is there. If anything is used that, they just use their left hand. Care. Ah, low shot here. Then they sleep. And I'm sure they were snoring. <laughs> Jesus. It's a man's faith that can do that. So we said, if you initiate this process, that's why you have peace. You are protected. Because of you, your family is kept. Everywhere is safe. They can't die. They just tell you, they, they want to tell you, hey, hey, you don't share it. If I don't die, you don't know. Is that act of faith you initiated that's keeping them alive? And they don't know, but you don't need to tell them. And if you tell them, they'll praise you, you get your reward. So don't bother to tell them so that God who sees in secret will reward you what? Openly. <coughs> then we say, if the blast of the rapture sounds <laughs> and you're not in faith, the best they will do for you if you sit on a rocket, it will take you to 100 and something thousand feet. The rocket had better have parachute. To bring you back. Otherwise, falling from that height is a death sentence. The person will not live to. Hebrews 11. By faith, Enoch was translated. That he should not taste death. They don't taste death in faith anyway. They sleep. They don't die. Did you hear me? Yes, they don't die. Satan cannot kill you. Do you get it? Yes, That's why they say by faith was translated. That he should not see death. Once you are in faith, you cannot see death. And if it's your time, you only sleep. You cannot be killed. It's not possible. Then we said, um, what else did we say? I hope you remember. All right. So we said you can only know God. All right. That's three or four, right? Number five. If you are in faith, that's why you should be excited. It's a win-win for you because what you're believing God will still come to pass. The only thing is you're under a lot of pressure. And I'll tell you why. When you master it, you no longer be under pressure. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why are we under pressure? We're not used to it. We like if the rent is 1.5 by January, by October, I should have like 5 a.m. <laughs> Praise God. When you walk, you're calm. Say, so what's going on? Trust God. You get it? But you don't like when it's due January 10, January 8, there's nothing you account. No! Well, please, 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 don't disturb me, please. I'm communicating with God. <laughs> We're not used to it. And God has assured you, even the dream you, you know, there are places that, how can you have a dream? It, and this is God in his humor. You're believing God to pay your rent. Then your landlord has a dream that he paid your rent. <laughs> That's what happened to Gideon. He was believing God to defeat the Midianites. Then the Midianites were having dream that Gideon defeated. <laughs> I, I don't know what more assurance a person wants. Right? Your enemies are beginning to dream that you made it against them. I, I know, I mean, God had to go that far. Praise God. <laughs> okay, Hebrews 11. Verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. No man can please God in this life except by faith. 
Bible is emphatic about it. You cannot please him except by faith. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and is a reward of them that diligently seek him. So, when they say somebody pleases God, it simply means he's walking by faith. All right, let's look at this statement by Jesus in John chapter 8, verse 29. Actually, if you're not intelligent, you can't walk with God. You can't. You can't. You cannot. Because God is not a boss like leader, He interacts with His creation. He smiles, he gists, he talks. You know, even sometimes he will ask them questions. So what do you think about this? What's your opinion about this? Mm, not bad, you know. So in John 8, 29, Jesus said, He that sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone. Why? For I do always those things that please him. This is common sense now. I do always those things that please him. Now Hebrews eleven six 6 says, without faith, you cannot please God. So what does Jesus do always? Let's put it this way. 29. He that sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I always walk by faith. Wow. That's what it means. Yes. This English. This English. Actually, God is technical. Kenneth Hagin was ministering to somebody. He was bent and bound by a demon of infirmity. So he held the man and said, you demon of infirmity, get out of him in the name of Jesus. Say, you are healed. Now see if you can stand. And the man couldn't stand. Ooh. Come on, try and see if you can stand. The man could not stand. Ah -ah. Say, come back again. Pray for him the second time. Bound the demon. And the demon was gone. Try and see if you can stand. The man could not stand. He did it three times. He said, go back to your seat. Jesus appeared angry. He said, I said in my name, you shall cast out the demon. He said, but Lord, you are here. When I cast out the demon, and the man did not stand, what do you want me to do? He repeated, I said in my name, you shall cast out demons. He was getting frustrated when he told it. He said, but Lord, you can see now. Oh, God. Then the Lord disappeared. I guess the Holy Spirit was having. He said, the thing just woke and said, yeah! See if you can stand. If was what stopped the man from getting here. He said, come back. Say, you demon of evil, you come out! Now stand! The man stood. Walk, he walked. Run, he ran. Kai. What was the hindering factor of healing? If. Can a dollar work with God? No! Because a dollar knows no difference between if and when was everything is bad book. I mean, aha, it's an intelligent person that knows where to use if, where to use when, where to use are. I mean, and those little, little details, they are important in the aspect of it. That's why we say faith has a language. Romans 10. The righteousness of faith does not speak in this wise. Just like you have English, you have French, you have German, there's a faith language. That one they say, I am healed. Oh God, but you look sick. I am healed. That's not the language of faith because that breathing word, confusion. You said you are healed. Okay. But your face, the, the, the tumor is still there. We can see it. I am healed in Jesus' name. You are used to that, aren't you? Haven't you heard of that? That's not the language of faith. They're giving no offense in all things. That's why God has to give you the tongue of the learned. That at no point and at no time may you be caught in the craftiness of words to speak contrary to God. God is not the author of confusion. And at the same time, you don't create confusion to the people hearing you. That's why I tell people, I was talking to a medical, a professor of medicine once. We we're discussing faith and medicine. He was to give a talk. So he said he wanted us to have a discussion and we we're having a discussion. And I said to him, I said, medicine is not supposed to deny. Like God never denied the existence of darkness. I said, medicine is supposed to uh, not deny the existence of the ailment. 
I can't remember what I said. He said, ah, God, he said, from what you just said to me, Pastor K, we doctors should emphasize more of the prescription than the ailment. I said, you got it. He said, thank you. I just got it. Thank you. <coughs> I was talking to a pharmacist. She was a, she's a friend of the family. So I was in the pharmacy. Wait, I need to, I need to even ask you one or two questions. So somebody came and gave her a prescription. She said, okay, take this drug, take this drug. If it doesn't work in three days, come back. I'll change the drug for you. When he left, I said, that drug is not going to work. She said, why? I said, you've not exhibited faith in it. And you have not given that man room to have faith in that drug. Your doubt, doubt is contagious. Faith is a spirit, is contagious. It's going to be contagious to him. He will spread it to his family. And all of them will be watching whether he'll be well or not. And he's not going to be well. So what should I have done? So you should have said, take this drug morning and evening for three days. By the third day, you should be much, much better. But I need to do an evaluation on you to know whether to change it or ask you to continue. Very important. I said, if you have spoken that, it would have worked. Now, let me ask you, is that not English? Is that not intellectual English? Can a dollar speak like that? No. So a dollar can't work with God now. She said, I get it. A doctor was trying to get a line. Say, if I do two more, we don't get it. We have to leave it. I said, then you're not going to get it in two times. He said, what should I? I say, keep assuring the uh, patient. Don't worry. Don't, we're going to get it. We won't keep punching. Don't worry. We're going to get it. So he did two. I said, you, that's why he didn't get it. So what, I said, no, reassure you will get it. So I'm saying you will get it. Now, agree with me, you get it. So I agree. And he won, and he got it, boom, they got the line. He had tried like eight times, he didn't get it. I said, you are not getting it because you said you can't get it. And then they're looking for the senior doctor to come and set a line. And he did the earth warm. I said, wow. And we're not even using yellow candle, we're using blue, which was bigger. So we got even a bigger vein. Sorry. If you don't understand what I'm saying, I can't speak Kamala all the time. <laughs> Go and to shop, to shop and be more enlightened. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Where was I? <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> so he said, my father is with me because I do the things that please him. And Hebrews 11, 6 says, without faith you can't please him. So my father is with me because I Walk by faith. So what will happen if the father is with you? What's the big deal about it? Let's look at one or two or three examples. Genesis chapter 28. Say so God is with all of us. No, no, it's different. God is with you on a different dimension when you are walking by faith. He is with you as a pleasure. Not with you as by covenanted deal. There's a difference between the, the two. There are couples living together because we have children. Abby, yes, sir. I can't leave. I don't want my children to suffer. And there are couples living together because they love and appreciate one another. Abby, both sides, both of them are living together. Yes, uh -huh. <laughs> Praise God. Genesis 28 verse 15. And behold, I am with you. Why? He's pleasing God. What will happen? I will keep you in all places that you go. I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you of. So if God is with you, he will keep you in all places. He will be with you at all times. He will go with you wherever you are going. He will come back to perform his word in your life. Because you are walking by faith. That's one of the benefits if God is with you. Any other one? Genesis 39. Genesis chapter 39. I read verse 21. But the Lord was with Joseph, showed him mercy. So that mercy we are singing, it comes by God being with you. God being with you comes by you walking by faith. Then he's with you he will show you mercy and he will give you favor. So, once God is with you, he will keep you, be with you, going and coming and perform his word in your life. When God is with you, <coughs> he 
He will show you mercy and grant you favor. What else again? Is that all? No, there is more. If you go to Genesis, even that same 39 verse 2, the Lord was with Joseph. He was prosperous. So, God being with Joseph made him prosperous, made him mercy, God showed him mercy and granted him favor. Those three things, in verse 2 and 21, he was prosperous, God showed him mercy, and God, mercy and favor is not the same. And being prosperous and merciful is not the same. God can show you mercy and that person is not prosperous. It's not the same. Once God is with you, so we have seen four things, he will be with you, he will protect you, he will preserve you, go with you, come back with you, and ensure that what he has told you will come to pass. Then if God is with you, he will make sure you are prosperous. If God is with you, he will show you mercy. If God is with you, he will grant you favor. Just because you activated faith by believing God, then you can see that the benefits are enormous. Also, 1 Samuel chapter 3, I read verse 19. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. Mark 16. I read verse 20. And they went forth, preached everywhere. You know, it's not every preacher God is with. The Lord walking with them, confirming the word with signs following. The pastor God is with you. will see results in your life. The pastor God is not with you. are just going to the theater and back. You know what theater? You know what they do in theater? They watch movie. Just went to watch movie. Somebody say, hey. Come on. Get it. Then you are preaching. He's preaching. You are dropping money all over the place. You are just, be, you are just facing entertainment. Better follow a man that God is with so that there will be works, signs, and wonders in your life. Amen? Amen. 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 You're quiet. Proverbs 16. Proverbs chapter 16. I read verse 7. When a man's ways please the Lord. What pleases the Lord? Faith. He makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. So you can walk in the valley of the shadow of death and have a nap there. <laughs> you can have a nap there. Don't worry. Just sleep. Leave that to the Lord. He will make them be at peace with you. Kai. Like a Moses. Growing up, a man makes a decree. Let's say it was later I made a decree. I will understand. He makes a decree. All males born of the Jewish must be cast into the Nile. He knows his daughter cannot have a child. You can't go out with a flat tummy and come back with a baby and say you were pregnant. Where did you get the baby from? From the Nile. Are they casting Egyptians in the Nile? No. Who are they casting in the Nile? Jews. Automatically, you know that's a man that should be dead. What did you do? You fed him. What did you do? You clothed him. What did you do? You sent him to school. Then you make him as a royal um, heirs, prince. Why? His mother's ways. Please the Lord. Kai. <coughs> you know when we send our children to school? Well, you know the best thing to do? Just make your ways, please the Lord. <laughs> If she tries anything, God will say, I'm Baba God, you. I've come to meet you. Your mom is pleasing me. And your dad is pleasing me. Now you and I did this place together. I don't want me. <laughs> Jesse Duplanty said he called his mother in a nightclub. He said, Mom! He said, why are you shouting? Quit praying. Quit it. It's turning me nuts. Quit it. Why? When he entered a, barbie, uh, a nightclub where there are strippers, he heard God say, I'm God, get out of here. He said, God, I want to enjoy my life. He said, get out, your mom is praying, get out. He said, God is speaking. They thought he has gone mad. He said, God, we are in a nightclub in Mexico with strippers. You know, like a nightclub in Las Vegas. 
Then you are saying God. Ah, they want you to psychiatric home. If you are saying God in New York or oh, where is that place? A lot of churches. Eh? Chicago, Atlanta, where there are churches. They say maybe it's God visiting, he may be calling you. Las Vegas. Ah, oh, please, you should know, know better that that's not a place to mention God. Mexico. He said the place is smoke. Ham and all sorts going on, cocaine, everything going on. He said, God just put it. He said, What did you just say? He said, I should get out. They looked at him. He said, Smart now. He said, He called his mom. Enough. Leave me alone. God is disturbing my life. Because of your prayer. Obviously, her ways must have been pleasing God. Oh, Jesus. Kai, praise God. All right. I'll close with this because of time. All this faith, 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 faith. I need the money stockpiled so that I don't need to believe God. And I just tell them, do you have this? And I just transfer and everything is cool. Why would I believe God? For God? Oh, Jesus. But there are benefits. Eternal. 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 Let's start with this. Romans 5. Yama. You will like this one. I want to bring the one you like now. <laughs> <coughs> Therefore, being justified by faith. Romans 5 1. Being justified by faith. I just leave it there. Justified. Do you know that Aaron? Aaron made golden calves. Aaron was with Moses in Pharaoh's palace. Aaron was the one speaking on behalf because Moses had gotten low self-esteem that he was not born a stamina. He made himself a stamina out of low self-esteem. A man worked with his father-in-law for 40 years. Look at the kind of wife she had. He had, call you this blood testing. You know, the wife was tough. And she used to run him down. A cook burning around, idiot, fool. Useless fool. And he was working for her father, so he couldn't. And if he talked too much, and the girl cries in the office, why are you crying so that? Is it Moses? Moses, come here! <laughs> so his esteem was damaged, ruined. <laughs> Father in law harassing, wife harassing, everything harassing. And they know he can't go back to Egypt. Pharaoh is waiting for him. So he's stuck with them. That's the worst. It's like you're abroad. You know, you don't have green card. You are stuck there. If you go, police will arrest you, they'll deport you. And where you are coming from, there's no money. It's in the village. So you can't go. So they just bamboozle you everywhere. That person is still. Will be damaged as if God steps in. It will be wrecked. Moses still was wrecked. Bible said, Man, mighty word. Now say, I'm a man of stammering lips. So it was Aaron doing the talking. Aaron is what telling Mo, um, Pharaoh, Let my people go. You, beside Moses, the sea parted. You now made golden calves. Say, These are the gods that brought you out of Egypt. Should he not have been killed instantly? instantly? No, they couldn't touch him. Why? The garment was on him. Until he got to that mountain. And they removed the garment. Then they killed him. Listen, if you are walking by faith, you can, you are justified. Anything you do, there is no sin in your life. I shake bell on jebe. Kayamata. Because faith automatically. Maybe I, ah. Let me show you one or two things. Luke 7. Let's look at Luke 7. From verse 36, one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with them. He went into Pharaoh's house, sat down to meet. Behold, a woman in the city, which was what? A sinner. Let's not hide what the Bible wrote about her. Is she a saint or a sinner? A sinner. A sinner. Actually, Jesus said there are sins which are many. Yes, sir. So there are plenty. Yes. I can't count the number of homes she has wrecked. That's why I protect your home. Because after her wrecking it, and she goes to God and takes an act of faith, they wipe it off. You see, did they not wipe this one off? It looks as if God is not fair. Actually, God is not fair. God is just just. He never said it was fair. Five talents, two talents, one talent. Is that fair? No. But in the true sense of it, it is fair because he looks at parameters we don't consider. In boxing, you only look at weight. So you put a man on featherweight. I even told somebody, I said, you look like featherweight category. Then you have middleweight. 
then heavy weight. Weight. God doesn't look at only weight. He'll look at weight. He'll look at heart. He'll look at your pulse. <laughs> He'll look at your capacity. He'll look at your, he will look at so many parameters. Then he will now say, you stay in middleweight category. Say, ah, God, no, no, no. Boxing will consider one weight. God will consider 21. Then he looks as if it's not fair. Truly, I repent of that statement. It's fair and just. Amen. Mm. I repent of that statement. All right, let's go on. Let's go on. Are we together? Or should I stop time? I should continue. Actually, <laughs> excuse me. My water, Deva, I don't feel like going there. So, and behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner. When she knew that Jesus sat at meeting in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, stood at his feet, behind him weeping, began to wash his feet with tears, wiped them with her hairs of her hand, kissed his feet, anointed them with the ointment. When the Pharisee, which had bidden him, saw it, he spoke within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, should have known who and what manner of woman this is that tortured her, for she's a sinner. And Jesus answering, said to him, Simon, I have some word to say unto you. And he said, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. One old father repents, the other fifty. When they had, they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon said, I suppose that he to whom he forgives most. And he said to him, Thou hast rightly judged. He turned to the woman and said to Simon, You see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet. She has washed my feet with her tears, wiped them with the hairs of her hand. You gave me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, has not ceased to kiss my feet. They had my head with oil you did not anoint. This woman has anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins which are what? Many. Please say it. Are you scared? Many. Many. She's not going to wait. She can't do anything for you in heaven. Say her sins which are what? Many. Many. Let's go on. Are forgiven. Did she ask for forgiveness? No. Why? We will see reason why. For she loved much to whom little is given, the same had little. And he said to him, your sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, who is it? And he said to the one, thy faith has saved thee. Thy faith has made your sins wiped out. Car. So, you say, ah, God, what is the meaning of this? Can you imagine me that I signed checks for 280 million. We are believing God for just 80,000 for things we need in the house. And I have to believe God. God wants to wipe your Sins from your lineage, wipe them out. Kai. It's a blessing. Kai. And when that verse is over, they release the tap and fill up the tank. So believe God for now. Believe God for now. Believe God for now. They are forgiven. She did ask for forgiveness. Once you take this initiative and you start walking by faith, every sin you have committed is wiped out. Is that not a good benefit? Then it's not worth walking by faith. I didn't say you should go from here. I rush to gospel. I say, hey, we need to walk by faith. No, 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 God. Let's start. Let's look at another example. Even that same Luke 7. Um, Luke 5. I read from verse 17. It came to pass on a certain day as he was preaching, there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. They brought in a, in a bed a man which was taken with palsy they sought means to bring him in, to lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop, let him down through the tiling with his couch in the midst before Jesus. When he saw their what? Faith. He said to them, many, man, thy sins are forgiven. So faith wipes out sins. So it's a benefit. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's a benefit. They may laugh at you. But it's a benefit. They, they will dig their sins to their lineage and dig it out. And if they don't dig everything out, they'll be in trouble. Yours is just wiped out without even asking. You know, First John says, if we confess our sins to him, he's faithful and just to forgive us. You don't even need to confess. Just walk by faith. Just, how many do you know that you want to confess? So that's one of the benefits. Let's go on. We said number two, you cannot be judged. Romans 5 says you are justified by faith. So you cannot be judged. So even if you are wrong, anybody that speaks against you, they activate the law of death automatically over their lives. Just for speaking against you. <laughs> number three, 
You have a good report with God. Hebrews 11 2. For by faith, the elders had a good report with God. If you have a good report with God, and men bring evil reports concerning, you know, that's like what he shared about Moses. Moses had a good report with God. He married, is there an Ethiopian? He still had a good report with God. The accusation Miriam brought, oh God, let me explain. <laughs> That's why you need to be very careful. Here is a man walking by faith and violates the word of God by marrying an Ethiopian. Siporabi and Miriam, his sister, says, you did wrong by marrying a non-Jew. And God, who gave the law through Mo Moses, when I brought the law, and said, you shall not intermarry with them. Marry only with the Jews. Then he went to marry with them. And he said, do as I say. Make it not do as I do. Then he walks by faith. And Miriam brings it to and God said, Miriam, let proceed for seven days. For daring to bring a report against a man. That I gave a clean bill. Nanosi. Is it not Wahala? Wahala Bariyo. So who is right and who is wrong? That's why Jesus told the that ritual. You don't know who is right. Because some people look wrong and they have a good report with God. And once you have a good report with God, anybody who says any contrary, God will summon the person. Say me. Say you are not afraid. Is Moses' elder sister, not junior, Egbo? And God said you are not. Then when Moses begged, 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 God said, okay, all right. Because you have begged, at least let I even have seven days of leprosy first for begging. Let it be seven days. What would have Moses been begged? They would have killed her. They would have killed her. For what? For bringing out a legitimate wrong. Once you walk by faith, you can't be judged, though. Do you see governor in Nigeria? Can you sue them? They have what they call immunity. President. A president steals your money while in office. Can you sue him? You are not lawyers. <coughs> you wait till he leaves. And if you have made the constitution in office, I give them lifetime. Lie, lie. He goes, he goes away with that crime. That is faith. That's what it does. You cannot be summoned to the courts of heaven. And if they summon you, they would only praise you. While there are charges against you on earth, because you have a good report with God, as you're walking towards the courts of heaven, they salute you like they did to Stephen. You think Stephen was so pure from birth? It's a lie. They stand and say, Welcome to him that overcometh. You know, Revelation. I will give you to eat of the eating manna. That's the man that stole your money. And you shall eat of that. I shall give you a new name. Say, Lord, wait. You don't know who you are talking to. This man, Nabaraka. Natif. And you shall be blessed. Ah. <laughs> to be honest, the thing with Jacob do no good. Let's be honest. No. That's a lie. No, no. That's a deceit. That's a fraud. And if I were to expect God, I mean, Cain killed Abel. When God ambushed him on the way, what did God say? Say, Cain, where's your brother Abel? Abi, yes. that's my God. Which one be this? Then you ambush Jacob. Says I was with Abraham and Isaac, I shall be with you, eh? I will not leave you nor forsake you, eh? Fear not. Moses, not your shorty, ah, with stolen mandate. The difference is, he's walking by faith. You know what faith is like? You know what the law is like? The law is like traffic light, red, and you stop. Yellow, you get ready. Green, you go, and it's regulated and regimented. You know what faith is like? It's like siren. Mm. On red, when it's coming. You are on green, you stop. You are amber, you stop. The police enforcing the law stops everybody. On red, you go. And has that ambulance broken the law? 
Broken with law. We say it. Wow, 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 wow. Our governor is passing. You want to arrest him for driving on red? <laughs> eh? That's his faith. Ah, I believe from today you are looking for how to walk by faith. I mean, yes. you know, I mean, Christians love Solomon. I'm not a Solomon fan. No. <laughs> he didn't walk by faith. That's why his name is not in Hebrews 11. I know most people don't like David. Ah, my job to do your like kilo day. You can only see me. But I love the fact that his name is in Hebrews 11. I want my name in Hebrews 11. I don't want a situation where I have good report with men and don't have a good report with God. It's good to have a good report with God and with men. That's what I crave for. To have favor with God and men. But the priority to me is with God. You know, once we die, the first place we go in heaven is the um, assessment room where they start playing the video of all the things you said. They first show you your reward. Say, so you abuse this man. They say, this is the reward you has been denied. Because every careless word, you must give account of it. Why did you abuse this man? You called him an idiot. Show us from the gospel why he's an idiot. How do you want to prove person be idiot from gospel? How do you want to do it? First, define idiot. <laughs> is it Webster you want to use to define I idiot? Before the court of God. How do you want to do that? It's better you don't say it. Abby? Eh? Well, at least there's fool in the Bible. I can still, uh, a fool will hear and not learn. Abby? I refuse to learn. <laughs> I can simply, but you see, oh, oh, mo, we, Allah called, okay, where is it? man, is a fool. The person that said there's no God. They say, why do you call him where? He said, he said there's no God. They say, oh, you are correct. You are justified by that statement. You can get your reward. But if you say, that guy is a buffoon. They say, please, it's not in the gospel. What is buffoon? Can you please define it from explanation of the gospel? Because this is the book of life. It carries everything. So tell us what a buffoon is. You can use Webster, but describe it for us from the gospel. How you go do that? You get it? So in heaven, you're going to see categories of people. And you're all weighed separately because of faith. So, for walking by faith, you will have crowns. James chapter 1 verse 12. Blessed is the man that endured crisis. When he has endured and overcome, he shall be given the crown of life. 2 Timothy 4 7. I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. I have finished my race. Now it's left for me the crown of righteousness. So if you want my faith, they'll give you a crown of righteousness. Then the crown of glory. He said like Second Peter. He said like an elder. I have stood on the word of God in the midst of adversity. Now it's left for me the crown of glory. And there are many more crowns. So without faith, you can't get the crown. They'll just conscript you to heaven. There is heaven. Okay, sorry. In heaven, there's paradise. There's the holy city. The holy city is measured. The paradise is not measured because it's for Bogweru. You know what they call Bogweru? All right. I don't want to mention anything like Apple Island, um, um, Orange Island. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but you know, those are islands within Lagos. Right? Now, in Lagos, you have everywhere. For everybody. But those islands without passport, you can't enter them. That's how the holy city is. It's an exquisite place which only those who walk by faith are allowed in. So you say, but I had to believe God for God wants you into the holy city. That's why he allowed it. Otherwise, when you die, you only live in paradise. What do they do in paradise? They wear gowns. What do they do in paradise? They stand. What do they do in paradise? They wear palms. What do they do in paradise? They cry. And it shall wipe the tears from their eyes. What do they do in the holy city? They sit on thrones. What do they do in the holy city? They discuss with God. What do they do in the holy city? They behold his face. What do they do in the holy city? They have medals. What do they do in the holy city? Is the city of the prophets. Where God's seat is. What about paradise? 
There's multitude like no man can number. You can number the one in the holy city. So God wants to shift your habitation from um, those of you into property. What do you call it? No, I didn't mention any, please. Praise God. From where? From, um, I went to an estate during the week. They said, if they take light, 1 a.m. and they say, fault, they come and repent. Where will I live? If they take light, 10 in the morning, we still call them. Where are you people? <laughs> come on, time. You don't, we don't have light now. Is that Mr. So-and-so? -so -so? We're waiting for you. They finally do the light the next day. Then they say, Pastor, we're outside. We have finished the light. Your boys are there. But then he said, you don't even dare come and say your boys are outside. You quickly go and fix it. He said, one name. If they say fault, they go and repent. You can see that city differ from city. Zion Yato, the city of the great king. Oh, Yato. He says, not them. Um, in the Bible, we call it Dube. <laughs> God wants to shift your habitation to high class. Walk by faith and move in high class. You to stop. I know. Stop. Are you getting it? Ah, a jaw. Please. Praise God. I want to see some of you when I look from my mansion up. Ah! Hey, see his book. What's up? Pastor, move on. Why never went there? I know how she will talk. Then, Sean will just talk fully. You know. Ah, but more. Motion boy, I just suspected. Pastor, but this some will suspect. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, in those paradise, the mansions are together like that. In the holy city, they have lawns. Like me, I like tennis. There'll be a tennis court in my mansion. Yeah. <laughs> Kai. At the back, there'll be, you know, not tennis court, not cement, oh. not those ones they put cement. Ah! Hey, yeah, I don't even know what they will use. What, what, what mineral? Or a precious stone they will use for it. Are you getting it? Then I like, <laughs> oh God, that's where all desires are met. Everything ends there. And when we go to paradise, we'll see those who are crying, like those who couldn't walk by faith. Pele, Adama worry, ate du pepo make it. Both you dog keeper, you know too. Ah, over the dog keeper, over the senior dog keeper, she better go the dog keeper go faithful. I'll promote you. So go. They will promote you. Don't worry. Just start with doorkeeper. You get it? Why you sit on the throne with the Almighty Jesus? Oh God, time is far gone. I have to. I think I took time to talk off what I'm supposed to be talking. And you people at the course, I'm blaming you for it. Eh? <laughs> if you're not you now, I've just finished the message since. So in heaven, if you walk by faith, you will have thrones, you will have crowns. In Isaiah 62, it says, He has given me the garment of salvation and the robe of righteousness. He said, Righteousness is a gift that is given to those. The Bible says, And Abraham believed God and he was declared righteous. So that robe is not, uh, I think our sister said it, that the garment is China. You get it? Why the robe is what? Don't mention China. The robe is um, what, what's special cutting from where? Linen, suit from Italian. Designer, Kai, when you wear those robes, that's why you should walk by faith and be grateful that is allowing you to walk by faith because you will be dead in the robe of righteousness. That robe glows like light. Kai Yama. Glory and meeting. You know, garment you can see through. China, see through. Hello. Praise God, Jesus. Please walk by faith. Be grateful that you have to believe God. Though the capacity is there to have it without trusting him. Be grateful that he subjects you to it. It's a temporary process to settle your eternity. Then you continue and walk in the abundance. But now, when you are in the abundance, you know that it's not the abundance, but it's the God who has provided the abundance. And that's where your faith will be. I have to close. I have not even finished the benefits. That's serious. If I've not finished the bed, that's serious, right? Yes, so if you are believing God, things are not the way they ought to be, and you're trusting God, then you should say amen. amen. If you're trusting God, things are not the way you want it to be, you should say hallelujah. hallelujah. Actually, you should be happy 
Why? Because you are still going to get it done. You're going to make it. You're going to overcome. You're going to have it. He says the word which we have seen, which we have heard, which we have handled, which we have experienced. The word of life. And the Bible says that the word was made flesh. It changed and took the form of what will benefit us. So it's still going to take the form that will benefit you. It will manifest in flesh. You will have it. You will handle it. And God will be glorified in your life. In the name of Jesus. Then it will work for you eternal benefit. And it will work for you earthly benefits. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you are worshiping with us in the gracious church for the first time this morning, please can you stand up so we can welcome you. First time in the house.